Wow, what a keynote. Tablet absolutely knocked it out of the park with that keynote. There's just so much to unpack. I don't know how I'm going to do the summary, but here we go. As ever, let's get started. First, we're going to look at the context before the keynote. Then we're going to look at the four different sections of the keynote uh, in, in chronological order. I think that's the sense that makes the most sense because that's the way it was delivered. So I think it's easier for you to follow. Secondly, I'll also call out that you should go watch the keynote yourself if you've got an hour and a half to spare. It's nearly two hours, actually. It's one hour, 48 minutes is the runtime on YouTube. So um, if you can spare that, just go and watch the message for yourself. It's also on Salesforce Plus. Go ahead and watch that. But um, I will touch on these two points. Firstly, Tableau announced 24.2 and 24.2 has a capability called Viz Extensions. You might have seen a video on LinkedIn that I did. I'll put it here in this video. It is an incredible set of capabilities and there's lots and lots of questions to answer, but I can't cover that in this video. We'll make a separate video later this week, this weekend, next week. So much stuff to get through. So be sure to check that out. The other thing was announced was some capabilities relating to Apple Silicon and also capabilities related to multi fact analysis which then links into something that was announced at devs on stage. So although these were announced sort of before the keynote, they were mentioned in the keynote as something that was announced. So there was quite a bit of context uh, to sort of su support what was going on in the keynote today. The final thing I'll mention is that the keynote itself was very much a story about the past of Tableau, the present of Tableau, and then the future of Tableau. When I mean future, I really do mean the future of Tableau. This was really sort of visionary piece within the keynote. Let's start with the opening of the keynote. Okay, so like any keynote from Tableau, they always open it by essentially doing a summary of what's coming up in the week. Because this was the second day of conference, they already sort of had some of the sessions already. They were outlining some of the key events today, that is iInviz and then the data night out, and then a couple of touch points throughout the week, and of course, the conference itself. So super standard opening. We then move straight into Tableau Public, and I didn't really see this coming because what they did is they used Tableau Public as a way of doing two things. Firstly, as a mechanism of showcasing how Salesforce's values are represented in the product, Tableau Public. And they extended this by essentially saying, hey, look, we love this community so much, we're gonna give back and give back with a feature they've asked for, which was the ability to save locally on Tableau Public. Yes, this is an absolutely incredible feature. This has been something that I think People sort of really struggle to understand the Tableau Public, which is why do I have to save it to Tableau Public? Why do I have to save it to the cloud? Well, now you can just save locally on Tableau Public Desktop Edition. That's actually its official name. So that's going to be a huge barrier removed for people who just want to learn Tableau. You can literally install it on your personal machine without ever wanting to publish the Tableau Public and just start practicing Tableau. Huge game changer. It makes it essentially the free version of Tableau, which is a really, really nice way to, to, to do it. And Tableau then sort of backed this up with a couple of supporting facts throughout this sort of section. It actually called out some of the year-on-year -year growth numbers for Tableau Public, which I think was an interesting sort of choice. I think they're using Tableau Public as a way of showing growth in their platform and a way of showing growth in their user numbers. A pretty important stat if you're working in the market, if you're trying to talk to investors, if you're trying to give confidence around Tableau's position in the analytics space. That said, why start talking about that? It must be because some other metric isn't doing so well. So typically when companies sort of switch the metrics that they focus on, they do it because the, you know, the, the incumbent metric they've been using is no longer favorable. So you've got to ask yourself, what is the unfavorable metric here? Is it the customer growth? Is it revenue numbers? We don't really know what it is because I've never really paid too much attention to it. But if you're an analyst in the market paying attention to these stuff, let me know. Now, if I look back at my notes, and I have to look back at my notes, there's quite a lot here. Um, this placement of sort of Salesforce's value was really, really prominent. They kept on sort of going back and forth, back and forth, and sort of weaving the community points in. And then Ryan Ate sort of set out what it calls the five steps of becoming an AI enterprise, uh, and they mapped it to Salesforce products and sort of very clearly placed Tableau in that sort of fourth spot, right before the very last spot with Einstein and Copilot. And so I think that was a really interesting message to sort of start with Tableau Public, align the values of Tableau Public with Salesforce, and then remind everyone where Tableau sits in the Salesforce ecosystem. I think that's a very deliberate move, especially this year where the conference does seem to have been sort of de-Salesforced a little bit. 
Um, but we'll come back to that a little later on. Okay, so that was pretty much the opening, very standard opening, and we then moved on to another section which was essentially about the waves of analytics. Let's talk more about that. So Ryan then used a very interesting analogy of waves of analytics to sort of tell the story of the past, the present, and the future. And we'll come back to the future later on when we talk about the piece on vision. But let's talk about sort of the past. Wave one, the very sort of start of this analytical movement, uh, Ryan sort of put it very nicely. This was sort of the original like ideation of BI. Then came wave two, this idea of self-service. And that is really where Tableau was born. Tableau has spent 20 years solving that problem and has done so with great success. Ryan calling out some of those successes on stage with some sort of highlights from the company's heritage, but also using this as an opportunity to thank the community that has got the product there. So the data fan became an important part of this segment. And um, it was really an opportunity to say thanks, get the visionaries, get the user group uh, leaders, get the ambassadors up, get everyone in the room that has really helped push Tableau to this sort of position of provenance in this particular phase. Um, but what was interesting was this sort of uh, acknowledgement that look, where we are in the last couple of years is actually the next wave, so wave three. So this is a really a bold acknowledgement from Salesforce now, let's say, that look, Tableau has been on this path to change for the last few years, and they sort of set out the features that they've, they've sort of put out to sort of cover that. So it actually starts with Tableau Mobile, Tableau Cloud, and it follows all the way through with things like Tableau Pulse, Einstein Copilot, and then some of the features we're going to see today. And this is very much the wave they call the AI wave. So this is sort of the wave that leads to where AI is heading. And they call this wave three. And it was a really important sort of piece of context because this is where Tableau sort of paused to say, hey, look, this is wave three. Let's show you what we're doing right now to solve problems in this wave. This wave is in flight. Let's walk through some of those particular challenges. And so this is where we then moved on to what I would call the third segment, which was moving forward with Tableau, ultimately starting with one of three items. So uh, Ryan sort of set out, hey, look, we're going to talk about uh, what we're doing today. We're going to talk about the way we're thinking about the future, so vision. And then we're going to talk about devs on stage. So innovation, vision, and devs on stage. Okay, let's start with the first one, which is innovation. Okay, so innovation, wave three, as it were. So this was actually a pretty straightforward section. This is more the traditional Tableau that we've seen at uh, Keynote, essentially stepping through a couple of things. So the way they did this is they sort of topped and tailed it with a customer segment. So at the very beginning, we had a customer segment. Uh, we had a, a gentleman from, I think is, uh, I can't remember the name of the organization, but it came from a banking organization. I'll put it up on screen. And essentially he talked about data culture being a core component to how they deploy something. And it was sort of teed up by Emacs who's essentially saying that, look, before you have AI, you have to have a data culture. You have to have a data culture that functions, that has people that know what they need to do, that are empowered to do what they need to do. And his customer segment was very much speaking to that point, like, hey, this is how we've done it. And it's exactly that point on culture. Having done that, uh, we then moved on to a very short segment, which is, I think, something Salesforce keeps having to do every time it talks about AI, which is keep reminding you, keep reiterating that there's an element of trust and faith that you put in them to use these features. And as a result, they're going to handle that data and treat it with respect. So there was a big focus from Elizabeth here on trust, safety, and how the Einstein trust layer works. Thankfully, they didn't go into that diagram that we've seen hundreds and hundreds of times. But I think if Salesforce had the opportunity, they'd sort of uh, tattoo this diagram on everyone's forehead so they know that they're not doing anything nefarious with uh, your data when it comes to sort of AI models. Now, the weird thing here is that, you know, whilst that is the case now, I think it, there's, there's an element to which where, you know, if you're going to build good versions of this technology, you are going to have to train it on something. And the best stuff to train it on is the stuff that your customers have. So um, it's interesting to sort of hear on one hand, look, we're not going to train it on your data. Your data is yours. But there's a ton of other data that does belong to Salesforce, does belong to Tableau. You know, I think of the Tableau forums. That's basically all their own IP, isn't it? Even if you're putting stuff in there, it's you're putting it on their platform. So that belongs to them. You've got Tableau Public. Here are all of us uploading visits to Tableau Public, free product. In the terms and conditions, I'm pretty certain that it says that anything you put on there, they can use to improve the product, understand how it works and use that. So they don't really need customer data really to be sort of doing all these things. So on one hand, I appreciate the call out that they're not going to misuse your trust. 
On the other, I'd like them to be a bit more honest about, look, here are the sources we're using to train the models to make them do the right things, because without those models, you're not going to really do anything valuable. And ChatGPT can't do much about Tableau. You have to really sort of write great prompts for it to do that. So laying out that story, I think, is is sort of an important counterpiece that you think you have to ask and we hopefully have to see. But hey, I could be completely off the piece here. If you know something about this that I don't, please let me know in the comments. Point me in the direction of the Salesforce documentation that has all this. I'm sure there's something out there and we can dig into it. OK, looking back at my notes, um, we then moved into the Tableau Pulse section. So having sort of teed off the safety and trust element, we talked a bit more about Tableau Pulse and Einstein Copilot. Um, there was actually a couple of demos that sort of led into this. Uh, the really interesting thing here was they used us to call out a couple of facts. Firstly, 3,000 customers live on Tableau Pulse since launch. That's pretty good going given that it only launched pretty much at the beginning of this year. And you've got to remember that, look, Tableau customers sometimes are so slow <laughs> updating products. And then you also have a big customer base that's on Tableau servers. So what I'd love to know is the percentage of the addressable market that have actually started to use Tableau Pulse. And then, you know, if that number is going to go up, Seeing that reported again towards the end of the year, I think that would be a really good indicator. The other thing is, how many of those have gone live with end users? Because the thing is, you can enable it and start using it, but you're not necessarily deploying it and sort of getting everyone in the organization using it. You might still be testing it. So again, I'd love to sort of see that split up, but you can't really know. Like as, as long as Tableau is concerned, if you're using it, you're using it. And so I'm sure you count towards the metrics. Um, the other thing they called out was something called metric bootstrapping and pulse goals. So metric bootstrapping is essentially when you're in a visualization, you see something and you think, ah, oh, this would make a great pulse metric. So you click on it and it generates a pulse metric and boom, you have your pulse metrics linked to that visualization. I think that's a pretty nice way of getting people into the habit of creating these pulse metrics more organically. And then on the flip side of that, we also had an, uh, a sort of a, uh, an idea of something called Pulse Goals. Now, I don't actually recall seeing this demo on stage. So if it was there, I've seen so much today that maybe I'm just forgetting. But Pulse Goals seems to suggest the ability to set a goal for a particular metric and sort of being alerted when it gets there and having a sort of progress bar towards that metric. So um, something I'm really keen to see. But it was really good to sort of see this journey about Tableau Pulse being sort of pushed forward and seeing where that ends up. Now, Einstein Copilot was a feature that you really had to see. And the thing is, I've seen this in so many different contexts that actually this is starting to tell a really compelling story about this feature. The demo they gave was essentially a day calculation that needed a fixed LOD uh, with two dimensions to calculate the average of something. And that is the kind of thing where, look, a user's just not going to know what an LOD is to even be able to Google what an LOD is so they can use an LOD. If you're just starting out in Tableau, that's the calculation you want to write. You're just going to go write average of a thing and put it in the table, get it to look right, but then not realize that it's not dynamic and it's not working or the context changes. Anytime you do a percentage, it breaks. So having something like Copilot spell it out for you was fantastic. So that was sort of in the visualization space. In the Tableau prep space, Copilot was actually going through steps, suggested steps one, two, three, four, showing you what you could do with the data prep flow. And this is amazing because it really gets everyone past that uh, hurdle of what to do first. Like, where do I start with this analysis? What problem should I be solving? And as you start to solve those problems, I think more problems become apparent and the answers start to come to you a little bit better. And you get into what Tableau used to call the flow, right? So the flow of analysis was something that you'd get into. And once you're in it, it's much easier to sort of create the right path and craft the exact thing that you need. So. That was really good to see. Um, we also got something I've never seen in my entire Tableau sort of, you know, history or understanding of this company, a roadmap going into 2025 <laughs> Q1. Like, what is this? Like, what happened here? <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. I, I think in the live stream, someone caught a screenshot of me just, just being like, how are we getting all this? So it's really good to see this really bold roadmap of here's what you're getting all the way. And it kind of makes you know, look, they've planned this out. This stuff has got a, a very strong lead in. And actually, it also means if you're asking for something, if it's not on this list, it's probably not coming until the end of next year, because the stuff that needs to get in this list is only getting longer. So it's really good to see that roadmap. Now, a couple of other things we saw in this section, this is stuff they're probably going to announce in 24.2 or in the next release. So Cloud Manager, the ability to have multi-site capability across Tableau Cloud, powered by something called Hyperforce, I have no clue what Hyperforce is. I don't know if it's a brand name within Tableau, if it's an AWS capability, but 
They reference AWS as being the capability that runs this, and it's essentially a way of distributing your Tableau Cloud sites across different locations around the world. 16 pods they mentioned in the keynote, but having a central cloud manager where you can distribute your licenses to each of those sites. So that's really the capability we see in Tableau Server for multi-site environments. Again, really good to see that. Um, we also saw a couple of capabilities around Viz extensions, essentially the ability to build visualizations using additional extensions that you can get in the marketplace. I'll cover this in a separate video because it really does need that. But if you haven't done so already, check out my short video on LinkedIn and uh, Twitter showing you how this works. Literally in one minute, 23 seconds, I built an amazing Viz. But as many people are calling out, look, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So we'll get into that a little bit later on. Okay. So that really was the end of the wave three piece, this sort of innovation statement saying, look, we're innovating right now as we speak. Um, here's what we're delivering on and here's what's on the roadmap and here's what's coming. And then we took a turn. Now, I didn't think Tableau would go down this route. And for the first time, we saw someone called Southern Jones. Now, if you don't know who this is, this is the product manager of Tableau, essentially replaced Francois Argenstadt, um, who was on the live stream, by the way. He, he dropped into the live stream just to let us know that he misses the data fan. And the great thing about this was it's the first time we've seen him, which I think has been a deliberate move. Don't introduce the chief product officer for this new vision until you know they're ready to show something. Because what you want to do is represent someone new, someone different with them, and, and have that new product associated with that person. So I think it was very interesting. And he even made a point, hey, this is my first time standing up here talking to all of you. And it really came out punching. And in order to set this up, Ryan had described four key problems. So the four key problems he listed, in fact, I can't remember all of them. I'm not going to pretend to know them. I'll put them up on screen. But to be honest with you, these are the four problems that people have been complaining about. I think the one I go on about is the inability to reuse assets. In fact, I made a video now, I don't know how long ago, calling the ultimate version of Tableau. And in that video, I actually talked about the problem of Tableau, which is you can't reuse assets that you have. And I talked about breaking Tableau down into its, into its components and being able to bundle up what you want from that bunch of components. And so this is exactly it, sort of composable analytics, being able to take pieces from where you need it, putting it all under one roof, making it work with one cohesive interface, and then making it solve business workflow problems that have typically existed. So this idea of then being able to use the platform to actually take action immediately was a really, really powerful element. Now, they showed some radical designs for this next bit. So we'll call this the fourth wave. This is essentially the wave that wasn't mentioned before, but was the piece about vision. In this section, there's just so much to unpack here that I think I have to cover this in a separate video. But Go and watch this section for yourself. I'll try and leave a timestamp for it in the comments. I'm going to need to put a lot of timestamp in the comments because I think it's really important to see this for yourself and how it's narrated and how it worked. But it's very much Tableau as we know it today, sort of deconstructed right to its bare bones and then that core taken out and put into a brand new interface with a brand new paradigm of how people collaborate and a brand new paradigm of how people share and solve business workflow challenges in the flow as it were. So really, really important element of the keynote. I can't stress it enough. Just go watch this. Uh, I've probably had a shot up on screen as I'm talking, um, but yeah, you have to see it to, to sort of really understand what it is. So um, I encourage you to go check it out. Um, there was another product manager who got up on stage and sort of talked to some of these points as well. Um, so be sure to check out sort of their bits as well, because I think this has been a really cohesive sort of long thought through plan. I've actually heard discussions of this sort of being discussed a long time ago. I can't really go into like, you know, those discussions as it were, because I'm obviously under NDA, but um, I was really pleased to see this finally getting into sort of the public domain and people really sort of starting to see where this thinking is going. It is bold, it is radical, it will sort of shift people's perspective on what they think is right and wrong. It's not gonna make everyone happy, but the first opportunity to see it in earnest was apparently Dreamforce. So Dreamforce in September is where you can see this working for the first time, which makes it interesting. It could really be a repositioning of Tableau as a Salesforce product squarely from Salesforce. So that will be um, something cool to watch. So look out for Dreamforce in September. It's not long away. Okay, so the final bit, we all know this bit, devs on stage. Let's tuck into that. Okay, for devs on stage, I'm going to do this slightly differently. I cannot go through every single feature they covered, so we'll have to do a separate video breaking this down. But let's do a whistle-stop tour 
through it here. I've got a video up on my laptop. So we're going to go through this and just quickly scan the features. And I'm going to walk you through and talk you through and kind of use this as a prompt to remind me what was actually in this session. So if we kind of go ahead, um, Matt Miller normally uh, sort of runs this um, in the last few years before this it's actually been Francois but because Francois is no longer with us and so that is kind of new um, Matt has really sort of stepped into that sort of product feature sort of product experience element of showcasing features so he comes up opens up devs on stage gets the crowd excited and introduces the four devs here today that kind of went through each of these features now each one of them had a sort of different role different audience to please and I like that mechanic because it kind of explains to you that look this person is going to talk about this sort of group of capabilities and it just keeps it fresh and gives us sort of a wider variety of perspectives as well so if we kind of uh, move forward um sophia sort of stepped up and actually gave a nice story about her background um she's into aviation and she sort of set up an example and she went to tableau cloud i think in this instance and introduced the cockpit the tableau data management cockpit now this is a data management cockpit so it's not going to be free you have to have the data management add-on i think for have to have this but gives you visibility of what's essentially in your Tableau cloud environment, which is kind of nice. Um, it's very simple. It's a simple thing to do. It's a nice dashboard and it's built well. You could probably build this yourself, but I think in order to do this, you do have to either use the metadata API to kind of extract this information and generate it or set up really good data sources. And I don't think it's as easy to set these up. So having it out of the box is kind of nice if you already have the data management add-on. If you don't, maybe someone's going to make a version of this that you can use. And then um, having done that, she kind of went into the next step. She was walking through visualization and in here, she wanted to sort of get some help cleaning some data. So she went into uh, Tableau Prep and uh, she pulled out what I think was Unsigned Copilot. So you can see it here on the bottom right, uh, just over here where my mice cursor is, I've just clicked on it. Um, you'll see Einstein Copilot sort of giving her some tips. And so if we kind of try and play this through, you'll see that it comes up with four steps that she can do some data analysis with. And as she clicks on these, it actually goes ahead and does the uh, analysis. You can see it sort of building out the analysis on screen. And so she's not built this, she's just clicking the prompts and they're coming in and doing this for her. So that's a really uh, good touch. And then um, she kind of went into the next bit in Tableau Prep where she talked a bit about sentiment analysis in Tableau Prep native with a nice Tableau Prep interface. I mean, this Tableau Prep interface is just really, really good. If there's anything they take into the new version of Tableau, this is the one thing I want them to take because it really helps you visualize the challenge of the problem you're trying to solve. And this kind of philosophy hugely going to help new audiences understand what they're trying to do in the product. So um, really, really nice to see that. Then she went into a viz and she went into build a data set and she announced that you can now join published data sets largely because multi um multi-fact uh, analysis is now possible with the data model so those two things kind of had to be solved at the same time that's kind of the reason why it's taken this long you can't do multi-fact analysis if you don't solve the problem of published data sources because you then create sort of other more challenging problems uh, up and downstream and the demo she gave was pretty nice she kind of walked through bringing in two published data sources linking them and relating them and then adding a third piece of information to them and having everything propagate so when one updates the whole entire thing updates which is really really nice to see so that being added to the platform so so good um and so you can see here a larger version of it and then um she went into um Tableau Cloud and she had Einstein write this description. So she's not writing it, she's just using it to write the description. So this idea of having better quality metadata throughout the system enhanced by AI writing those descriptions for you so people sort of don't have to spend the time doing that laborious work. And then she edited her viz and then we went on to Celine who then came up and did uh, something for Tableau Public. So let's go ahead and keep pushing through. She introduced new chart types. Now, this was great because what she did was sort of really tee this up and she kind of gave some really, really nice capabilities. I think she was really speaking to the analyst audience here. Um, so if we kind of step step ahead, Viz extensions, I've mentioned it already. She showed how easy it is to customize this. And then she kind of pushed forward and she mentioned a mapping parameter. So parameter, I think it's parameters, parameter actions in mapping specifically, I think is a specific feature or, or mapping parameter. I don't know which one of those two it is. I don't know enough about it to know the answer, but that was actually pretty good. And then she walked through a demo of how that works. I think I have to play with this to really understand it. And then 
something that was really easy to miss was the peace and accessibility uh, the ability to navigate maps and navigate all of the tableau interface using a mouse and keyboard this is a new enhancement tablet keep pushing the accessibility sort of discussion forward i am so bad at this i'm supposed to <laughs> discuss this i've just remembered i'm supposed to talk to ron about accessibility and i haven't gone back to him so i need to i need to go and do that ron is a member of the community for context so um, you'll find out who he is when we actually do this session on accessibility um, and so if I push forward uh, here, keep going, I think she comes back and what she does here is something that's been asked for for such a long time, uh, themes and style sheets within visualization. So you can see here that she's built this. And if I go forward a bit, you'll see that she's then able, oh, actually, no, she didn't do that. First, she actually introduced fonts. I completely forgot about fonts. That's just another another thing they added. I forgot. But you can now pick from, I think it was 12 or 20 fonts from Google Fonts in this list. So a much bigger set of styles and sort of capabilities. You know, Google Fonts has been around for literally years at this rate. So for tablets to add it now, kind of embarrassing if I'm honest. But hey, we're here and it's being done. So this is good. I actually suggest this to a product manager like seven years ago, I think at this rate. It's so old, but anyway, um, good to have it in there. Now, what she did then shows this, this capability here. So you can see it's one color and then everything gets changed to another color. And what she was doing there was accessing, I can't think, oh, there you go. Um, themes, custom themes. So being able to import a theme from a file and having it apply to the viz. She did this a couple of times just to show off you know, really sort of making the viz look entirely different. And this is saving you minutes and minutes of work. And then she handed over to her colleague who came to talk a little bit more about Tableau Cloud. And here, these were sort of some more nuanced features. So the idea for um, uh, Tableau to read attributes from your identity store. So then being able to apply certain capabilities automatically because those attributes speak to those capabilities. So that's really, really nice. Um, we then, if I fast forward, um, now I don't know if this was a translation uh, capability or the data set already had this translation. You can tell me what you think, but in the keynote, I didn't, I didn't see them call this out as translation, but you can see here one slide it's in English, one next slide it's in Portuguese because she's actually from uh, Brazil. So she speaks Portuguese or she thinks in Portuguese. And so this is something she showcased. And there's an icon there with the world um, button. So I wonder if this is a parameter action switching out the data set and the attribute is actually driving that parameter action or not. But anyway, we don't know. Um, and then she then showed how you can put Tableau Pulse inside of dashboards. We've kind of seen this before, but this is really sort of showing the execution of that in real terms and being able to customize it and choose it and choose what part of that uh, Tableau Pulse sort of capability you want to see. Uh, and then uh, she sort of put it back in and then they announced earlier on, they announced a closer partnership with Microsoft. But here what they did was they essentially showed you putting this information into uh, Teams, which was really nice to see. Um, Teams has sort of been a second citizen because of Slack, but now really announcing that closer partnership with Microsoft means they can get things like Microsoft Fabric into Tableau, but also get Teams integration a little bit more seamlessly done. So I think these kinds of partnerships are great. You never want to be in, um, you know, partnering with your competitor, but actually your customers don't care. If your customers are using Teams in your Tableau, you're going to have to build a good integration with Teams because otherwise it starts to become a frustrating experience. So I'm glad to kind of see that happen. We got a little bit more on VizQL data service and sort of how it's capable of working across different systems. And then we went over to this final section, which was actually for the first time, Tableau showcasing the work of other developers in the community uh, in its own product. So this was, this was really good. I mean, we, we got to see sort of three very radical uh, experiences. We had this AI search tool that was able to index content on a Tableau website. We had Figma to Tableau by Jessica and um, um, Tristan from La Data Viz. So this is very, like, this is so refreshing to see because you don't often get Tableau showcasing sort of these kind of edge case items. So for them to really step into this kind of signals that, hey, look, the kind of Tableau, you know, the kind of partners Tableau wants going forward are partners that build on their platform. Uh, that's really sort of what this says to me. In the past, you might have had like a, uh, you know, like a Accenture type or someone saying, hey, we're really good at delivering this. Come talk to us. We can help you. Now it's actually like, hey, what are you building? What are you adding to our platform? And that's what Tableau is leading with. And then we had Merlin talk about super tables, which is an amazing capability. And then at the very end, 
um, they snuck in this uh, discussion about um, Apple Silicon and Tableau. Now, I actually talked a bit about this earlier on already, so you can kind of pretty much take this, uh, you know, as is. He, Matt Miller did say, look, it runs 25% faster 50% faster. I don't know if 50% faster than a Windows machine or 50% faster than it previously did when it was not an Apple Silicon. So it's a really hard one to know. Like, what's the benchmark there? Um, but then, you know, Ryan announced uh, Tableau is coming back to San Diego next year. And uh, obviously, I mentioned Dreamforce. He kind of capped it off. And then, uh, yeah, we went on to the end of the keynote. So whew, that's been a whistle stop tour. Man, I don't, I like, I tried to summarize this really, really hard, but I think we're at like 30 minutes. I genuinely did try to do my best. If we're under 30 minutes, I like fantastic. If we're a little bit over, I'm sorry, but I really did try to summarize it. We've got a lot to cover over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to take my time. Literally, there's a lot to cover. So I'm going to try and do maybe one video every other day just to get through all the features. It is a slow way of doing it, but you know, everyone out there, you all know how to find out this stuff. You all know how to sort of get these features going. Um, I'll just be sharing my experience in small sort of bites on, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter. So you can kind of follow those for more real time updates. And then when I really have the knowledge I need, I'm going to sort of put something out. I really want to be conscious of, you know, respecting the fact that some of these things were not actually announced at this conference. So we're yet to see them. So I want to kind of pass the most important ones. So for those, Viz extensions are going to be one of those. And then um, multi fact um, analysis and the ability to sort of bring together published data sources going to change the world. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.